This next piece on the program is a very mysterious piece. It's his last piece of chamber music. And he wrote it in May of 1791. And exactly 30 years before that, in May of 1761, Benjamin Franklin came to visit England. He went to Cambridge, and he was invited to go to a concert party, a soiree at the home of a friend. And one of the featured performers was somebody who played on glass goblets. He would moisten his fingers, and he would take these tuned wine glasses, and he would rub his fingers around them, producing that characteristic eerie sound that we all know. And Ben Franklin was a very inventive soul, and he thought he could make an instrument that would be more efficient, and that could be played like an ethereal organ. And so he took tuned bowls, and he nestled them one within the other on a central rotating spindle, which was operated with a foot treadle. And this enabled the performer to wet his or her fingers and to play with all 10 fingers this rotating set of bowls like a, an ethereal organ. And people were charmed by this instrument, and it enjoyed quite a vogue in the late 18th and early 19th century. And there were many people who played it, including Ben Franklin himself. Anton Mesmer, the great hypnotist, played it and employed it as a part of his uh, mesmerizing healing sessions. Many people wrote music for it. Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven all wrote pieces for it. And in 1835, Gaetano Donizetti conceived the mad scene from his opera Lucia di Lammermoor, originally for soprano and the eerie strains of a glass harmonica, which represented the phantom lover Edgardo in her increasingly fractured and hallucinatory mind. During the late 18th and early 19th century, the most celebrated of the glass harmonica virtuosi was a lady whose name was Marianne Kirschgesner, who was blind from the age of four because of an attack of smallpox. But she exhibited great musical talent from an early age. She played the piano. And when she was 11, she took up the glass harmonica and became such a renowned virtuoso on the instrument that she was invited to tour the great capitals of Europe and play in the courts all through her 20s for the likes of the kings and the queens and people like Goethe and also Mozart, for whom she played in May of 1791. And he, like everybody else, fell into her spell and decided to take a day or two off from writing the magic flute to write the two pieces that we will hear this afternoon. And the first of these is the adagio and rondo, which involves flute, oboe, viola, and cello. And as a flutist myself, I played this piece a lot, but I can tell you we could never find a glass harmonica player who had the chops to play it up to tempo. And so we would always substitute a, a harp or a celesta or a piano, which sound nothing like glass harmonicas. And then last year I went to the Met and I heard Lucia di Lammermoor and the most astounding glass harmonica playing arching out of the pit. And I asked my friends in the orchestra, who's that? And they said his name is Friedrich Kern. And so I resolved on that moment to invite him to come and play this piece with us. And the only other thing to say is that the instrument he's playing is a contemporary descendant of Benjamin Franklin's glass harmonica. It's called the Verophone. And as you see, it has these long vertical tubes, which give it a lot more projective power than uh, those original small rotating bowls. So enjoy this literally mesmerizing piece. <laughs> 